The time is 6 p.m. and the regular meeting of the City Council of Denison, Texas is now in session. This evening our invocation will be led by Council Member Thorne. Let us pray. Our Father that's in heaven, we're truly grateful for another opportunity to come together have some very special guests from the St. Luke's Day School Summer Program who are going to lead us in our pledge. We have Grayson Dingler. Grayson, you want to step forward? We have Zoe Zerang. And we have Lindley Ferris. Ladies, anytime you're ready. conduct a public hearing and take action on an ordinance to rezone approximately 0.73 acres for property located on the corner of Washington Street and North, North Lamar Avenue from the Commercial Zoning District to SF5 Single Family Residential Zoning District case number 2022-0027Z. Ms. York. Good evening, Mayor and Council. So the first item I have for you tonight is a uh, request to rezone this property located um, at the corner of East Was Washington Street and North Lamar Avenue. Um, the applicant is requesting uh, a rezone to single family five, which is an extension of the zoning district to the east. The applicant is uh, wanting to construct single family homes as six lots to be more specific. Um, staff recommends approval of this request and planning and zoning um, also recommended approval of this request at their meeting held on, sorry, May 
May 10th, I believe, was their meeting. I'm sorry. That's okay. And I'm present for any questions. Um, it's kind of straightforward. Um, and they also did a re uh, requested a replat to be approved by planning and zoning at that meeting, and it was approved. So um, I'm present for any questions, and so is the applicant. Questions for Ms. York? This is a public hearing. Is there anyone here wishing to speak on behalf of this agenda item? There being none, the public hearing is closed. Uh, discussion from council. A motion. Mayor, I move to approve an ordinance changing the zoning for the subject property from the commercial zoning district to SF5, single family residential zoning district. Second. There is a motion by council member Spiegel and a second by Mayor Pro Tem Hander. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. The motion carries. Item 4B, receive a report, hold a discussion, conduct a public hearing, and take action on an ordinance changing the zoning of 2.569 acres from SF 7.5 single family residential zoning district to the SF 5 single family residential district for property located at the corner of Lane Drive and Davis Avenue, case number 2022-0427, Ms. York. Uh, thank you. The next item is a rezone request uh, for property located at North Davis Avenue and Lane <coughs> Drive. Currently, this property is zoned a single family 7.5, and the applicant is requesting to rezone to SF5. Um, staff directed the applicant several months ago to pursue this zoning district. There was a application for a replat that had been submitted um, probably last June by a previous owner uh, during the time that the infill uh, overlay district was in place. And when the applicant brought this before us, we directed them to request the rezone rather than moving forward with that replat. <clears throat> um, there is a zoning of two family duplex to the south and staff uh, felt as though that the request to rezone to SF5 was a good transition from that zoning district to SF5 and the surrounding area for the 7.5. Um, applicant is requesting to have this rezoned so they can construct 12 uh, single family homes. Applicant does state in their narrative, uh, project narrative, that they will construct these homes to have garages as well. And this is just a preliminary site plan of that uh, layout. <clears throat> Um, this does comply with the comprehensive plan. Staff recommends approval of this request, and planning and zoning also recommended approval of this request at their meeting um, on May 24th. And I'm present for any questions, and so is the applicant. Questions for Ms. York? Could you go back one slide, please? Thank this you. one? We had talked earlier about this property, about uh, where the sign says proposed zoning SF5 putting some type of park there or community playground? Is that maybe a possibility or is that what the owner now wants to do? <clears throat> those are odd shaped lots. Sure, so in the planning and zoning meeting, um, the applicant did have discussion with the commission pertaining to a park within that area. Um, I, I, he's probably better to speak on it, but it was discussed during that meeting. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Ms. York? Is this large enough to be a, a planned development if we went that route? No, sir. It would be, it'd have to be three acres. For a residential, I'm pretty sure uh, for... Planned development is two acres or more. I'm, I think it's three for residential, but I could, I could be wrong, but I, I'm pretty sure it's three. Thank you, Julie. Julie's pulling it up. Perfect. We'll come back to you, Julie. Okay. Any other questions for Ms. York? This is a public hearing. Is there anyone here wishing to speak on behalf of this agenda item? State your name and address for the record, please, sir. And I'm Brian Bridgewater. I'm the property owner and uh, also represent the home builder that will be building the homes out here. 
and I just brought some little paper copies that I've got. It, it's got the concept plan up there as well as a copy of the, the preliminary plat that we have not submitted. And also I've provided some representative elevations of kind of what we're expecting the homes to look like. So. And while they pass that out, the, the primary reason um, we're, we're requesting the rezone, this is a unique shape lot. Um, I personally tried, I'm a civil engineer, so I've personally gone through several lot options on this property. There's also a topography challenge on it. Um, with the current zoning of SF 7.5, the maximum density we could get on it is only four lots per acre, just meeting the current lot widths and all the other subdivision and zoning regs. Um, the primary reason we're requesting the SF5 is to allow us to reduce from 60 foot to 50 foot lots. So that would actually allow us to get six lots per acre, which is actually in line with what an SF5 zoning is. So under the current zoning, under a normal shape track, we would get about the same density as with the SF5 zoning on this track. So that's the primary reason we're doing that. Um, so... Let me, let's see. So the site plan, it's the same concept plan that's showing up there. Um, this property, the topography uh, falls pretty hard north to south. So on the southeast side, there's some you know, yellow arrows with a blue line. Um, we're gonna have to construct some kind of drainage swale back there within a drainage easement to capture all the, uh, the sheet flow from those lots and kick it east uh, over onto lane. Um, I have met with the utility department. Uh, looks like water and sewer is available around the property. Um, aside from that, some of the elevations on the back, you know, with, with, with our, our home building company, Footprint Residential, something we're, you know, we're, we're trying to stay away from architecture that's repetitive. You know, we're trying to give it a little bit more architectural interest. So the elevations, these aren't actually the homes we're building, but they'll be something similar in size. And uh, architecturally, there's more architectural interest, and that's, that's what we're trying to accomplish. So I know that there's been some discussions about potentially some masonry. Um, we have been talking about developing, well, as we develop this product, we'll develop some product that has some wainscoting around the, the, the wrap, or sorry, around the base, just to give it a little bit of material differentiation as well as color, dif color differentiation. So. Um, I'm hap more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. So, let me back up just a minute, Mr. Bridgewater. You, you said that these are not the homes that are being built. That's these, correct. These are just... These are representative, these are representative of, the, of the architecture we well, wish to use. If you go on back in the page after, after your your leadership page, if you go on back to that one, um, that that is probably not a, an elevation that we would love to see built. Okay. And I'm, I'm totally open to suggestions on this. So we've got to develop the products and then what's great once we have our floor plans, it's easy to vary the elevations on these. So, so if there's certain architectural requirements or, or things you'd like us to consider were there's there's three of us in the home building company and we we would welcome y'all's input and you know, this is your city and we're we don't live here so we don't we don't want to make you guys mad so um i noticed that most of these elevations um have two car garages is mm -hmm. that what the, is that what these are going to have is two car garages that's the plan yes there may be a couple of the lots on the sides where the lots there's a little bit of cross elevation we might potentially do a one car garage for example uh, a couple of the lots that face west, we might we might use a slightly narrower product there to allow for more grade differential to be taken out without retaining walls. But the bulk of the homes, we will have two-car garage. So can we tell by looking at this? I mean, some of them, it's pretty obvious that there are two-car garages. If you go uh, lot 10 and lot 9 and lot 5, but all the others look very narrow as if they would, were intended to be single car garages. Is that, am I misreading that? Not necessarily. Um, we're likely going to have some two-story product as well. And when you have the two-story product, it does allow for you to get a slightly narrower footprint on the lot. 
So your, your garage may take up half, you know, roughly half of your facade, but if you go up, it allows you to maintain your square footage. So we're gonna develop, you know, we have another property similar to this in another city that we're gonna have to develop the product that we're gonna use on both projects. So everything we develop here, we plan to use for both properties, but we will have a mix, mix, um, a mix of two story in this. So what approximately are the square footage of each one of these properties? Um, with the garage, uh, we're in the ballpark probably that the, the you know, 15 to 1600 square foot range. So we're generally shooting for a three, two or a four, two, uh, garage, you know, uh, with, with, with the two car garage. So that's primarily the range I think that's doing extremely well right now. And that's what we're, what we're trying to hit that sweet spot right now. 1500, including the garage. I should know my numbers exact, but there's, we, we haven't nailed down these floor plans, but most of the ones we're looking at, I know the, the livable or the AC square footage is around that, that 13 to 1400 square foot range. And then you throw the garage in there, which I guess is about 400, a little over 400 square feet. So that would, that would bump the footprint up a little bit more. So. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm speaking of preference now. Two-car garage um, is certainly preferable to a okay. one-car garage. Okay. Um, and um, and that that is important in creating these neighborhoods. Okay, understood. Um, you know, I, I I think that if we're going to and and Mr. Bridgewater, we we want people to want to build in Denison, mm -hmm. but we also want people to build things that are going to add quality of life to our community. Absolutely. And um, and so that's why I said to you that, that that picture in here is not something that we would want to see built. Okay. Um, that is not that is not something that I think adds quality to a neighborhood. Understood. Um, but um, I, I think some of these concept drawings look nice. I think as a council, as a city, I think it's important, we, you know, for an SF5, we want two car garage. Mm -hmm. um, some masonry in mm -hmm. the homes, I think, to, to add some value there. Uh, I think those are important parts. The and and multiple elevation. It, yeah. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> it, it does not add quality of life if you have 12 new homes and they all look identical and they're painted mm -hmm. the same color. Understood. That is, that Understood. It's not something that we're looking to be built in that neighborhood. Okay. Yeah, we're we're we are in, we are increasing the quality of the product. I mean, we're we're a fairly young home building group. I mean, I'm I'm a civil engineer, full time job, and my two friends, Aaron Elder and Brandon. You know, we we've, we've been doing this about a year and a half, and they built a few initial products here, but we're we're definitely taking a couple of steps up from the product that we built here originally. So these, like I said, representative architecturally, we want to really get a good looking product, and we've had a lot of people that are reaching out to us even to build for them. So we we want to continue to grow that image and that brand. Steer away from the um, proposed green space. And just rather Actually, I'm or... I'm open to that. So every city I've, I've worked throughout multiple cities in the metroplex and across Texas. Um, if I'm, I'd actually look to you guys for advice on that. If that's something you would like as a little community area back there, we're more than happy to plap that out um, or put an easement or however you'd like to do it. Some cities, the residents get upset about there being a public space in their backyards, and some cities don't. So I've seen it both ways. So even after this meeting, you know, please let us know, and we can we can sketch up a couple of options um, to figure out how to put something back there that would either serve just those homes, or we could you know pop a public easement out out you know out to both roads to allow for a sidewalk to curl in and out. But we're completely open to anything you guys would like us to do on that. And that's actually why we haven't submitted the plat yet. So once we get that feedback from you or staff, we're, we're more than happy to you know, revise our documents accordingly. So do you plan on having an HOA? Because I don't think we as a city want to take care of that property. Well, that's, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's the other piece of it is we don't necessarily want to maintain it either. So it's something I would envision potentially dedicating to the city. And that's why that it's a little bit more of a complicated discussion because there's so many parts to it. Um, we're definitely open to discussing it, and yeah, you know, just these things get complicated when you start looking at public spaces. I, I do think it could be worth discussing, though, because in our Parks and Trails Master Plan, the, the goal Correct. is to have everyone in Denison be within a 10-minute walk of a park, or, or maybe it's less than 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And that, that part of town is lacking a little bit in that being able to walk to a, to a park, and we could really 
I mean, I'm not saying it's not a huge, it's not a huge park. It's going to be a small neighborhood park, but it's mm -hmm. still a green space that people could get to. Well, my, my concern was it's private property and then us having access to get to that middle part. Did that easement kind of with the sidewalks like you're talking about on each end of the road? Correct. And we could actually go re replat these lots. I could create a, an individual lot that we could dedicate as public space. And then likely, uh, we would likely carve out it probably like a, f I'd have to work with staff and look at the subdivision regs, but I would try to cut out true public space to a trail to get out to both streets. So it might narrow up one of those lots a little bit. Um, it might require a small subdivision variation just from lot width, but you know, there's, there's ways to do it. Julie, did you get an answer? Yes, ma'am. Um, Non-residential is two acres, but residential is three acres. Um, there you go, I, Diane. You're smarter than all of us up here. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, is there any going to be? Is there going to be any irrigation, lawn irrigation? Is For the homes. Yeah. And the reason why I ask that. Mm -hmm. road, typically neighborhoods that look nice, one of the aspects is they have irrigation. Um, uh, and so I, I look at this and I think, yes, you could build something nice right now mm -hmm. that looked good, but let's look at 10, 15 years down the road. Is it uh, in front of us? Is it going to be just a bunch of mowed down weeds? You know, is it, you know, mm -hmm. like looking for the long term. Mm -hmm. I should know that answer. Um, my other two business partners uh, that deal more on the build side, I know we're putting fences and every uh, fences up. Um, let me double check, but if that's it, I, I can speak with them. And if that's a wish of y'all's, I'm sure we can incorporate that. It just tends to be that uh, owners who have irrigation mm -hmm. tend to take care of their lawns. Correct. Well, one of the reasons we asked the question about the plan development. You know, when it's a planned development, we can we can ask for sidewalks. Absolutely. We can ask for all of those things that add quality of life to mm -hmm. that neighborhood, mm -hmm. and um, and that that is exactly what we want to do going forward: is make sure that the neighborhoods that we that where new homes are built mm -hmm. are going to provide that. And we do plan to install new curb and gutter and sidewalk around the exterior of the private property. So that'll help, that'll help aesthetically there as well. That's right. Mayor, if I may, I can't tell from this diagram whether the right of way that they're going to dedicate is included in the 2.569 acres or if, if they own it now and prior to dedication, you could get it up to three acres. I'm not it's the whole property is a 2.69 because I actually was going to recommend a PD route myself because that's normally what we do with our developments so or other projects but yeah with the, 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 so once we dedicate the right of way the track will shrink down to a smaller acreage but is it over three acres mm -hmm. with the right of way no no okay mm -hmm. a great product uh, excited to, to see what this is going to look like I do think there's still some further discussion outside of this meeting that could happen for the park lane possibility and that kind of thing but I feel a lot a lot better about this now that we've discussed it yeah absolutely and I'll I'll, I'll, I'll keep in touch with Diane and and y'all are more than happy to reach out uh, we like I said love to incorporate anything in there you guys would like and we're, we're pretty flexible so easy to work with so thank you all okay. thank, thank you, you very much is there anyone else here wishing to speak on behalf of this agenda item? Yes, ma'am. Would you state your name and address for the record, please? Peggy Gardner, 2705 West Washington Street, Denison. And um, Mr. Bridgewater was talking about the unique geometry of that area, and he is, I mean, that's true. And so consequently, we have the water is going to flow where it's going to flow. You know how water is, but it's going to head to the west, 
and there will be, there's a cemetery here, and there's supposed to be a cul-de-sac neighborhood just next door to the cemetery. And also on the north side of the cemetery, there is a wash that has just naturally occurred. And I can see that water coming down around his curb that he's gonna put, which is fine, of course, but it'll just head across the street and go down that wash. So you have to consider that because that north side of the cemetery is already, um, there's, we've, we're finding artifacts from the cemetery down there at that uh, property line. And then again, the water's gonna wash uh, down lane like it should, of course, but once you get down lane toward Washington Street, it continues west and where the old school used to be, of course, there's a, an area that was built so, and it goes across the street so that water will drain across Washington Street and then continue on north. And it goes right behind the house of this poor little old lady named Mrs. Cates and uh, she lives at 830 Lane. And she is, because that water continuously washing down behind her house, she's losing mature trees. They're falling, they're being washed away. So I wanted to bring that to Mr. Bridgewater's attention. Think about the water down the line because there's a lot going on down there. And it is, it's all downhill. Yeah, I you know. actually specialize in that. Okay, practice, well then, so. then you're fully aware. I hope that, um, that there's a lot to be considered there. And um, so Mr. Bridgewater, you're, you're familiar with the concerns that she has for drainage. In, in the profession, yes. So we do large drainage plans, big and small properties. So, but the water currently goes where it goes. On larger commercial developments, a lot of times we'll provide attention. On residential, on deals this small, it, the increase in flow is, I don't want to say it's negligible. We do technically increase the flow, but the water, we still maintain all the same drainage patterns. So that's where interior developers get in trouble when they change drainage patterns. Well, and that's part of the issue is that the curb is going to direct it down that way, which that's what you want, but that's gonna make it just continue down to Washington Street and across that, what is now a field. There's like a little creek um, behind, like across Washington Street, Street at the corner of Lane and Washington, West Washington Street. It's a, a creek that runs across I think there was a school cafeteria there. I'm sorry, I don't know the address. But if you'll drive through there, or I can give you a tour. <laughs> However you want to do it, you can see the concern that's going on there. And um, then also talking about the duplexes that are, let's see, where are they? They are south of the property that Mr. Bridgewater's talking about. It's zoned two family, but it is really, there's just one duplex on it. It's all regular homes. And so I would hate for the duplexes to bleed over into that area that Mr. Du uh, I'm sorry, that Mr. Bridgewater is talking about developing. Well, Mr. Bridgewater cannot build duplexes there. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't so, be offended. So he's not going to bleed over. Because he cannot build duplexes. Okay. So. Thank you for that. I need. I always need reassurances about the duplexes. I'm telling you, that's and weird we to me. And we understand that, ma'am. We understand thank why you. you have that concern. And thank you for being patient about that. There is a gentleman at the top of Lane and, um, I'm sorry, he's at Davis and Lane. His address is um, 1113 North Davis. He already has water pressure problems and he has had city sewer clogged up two times in the past three months. So if the city will please make sure that that pressure is really and truly adequate for the additional homes and for this fellow sitting on the top of the hill, um, he needs better pressure. And um, if you, Mr. Bridgewater, if you put the two car garages in, we will be less likely to have so many cars parked on the street. I'm sure you know that, but there is a lot of problems with cars being parked on the streets. 
and especially on Washington, West Washington, they're at the corner of Lane and Washington. There are a number of duplexes. They have one car garages, and there are old teacher parking lots, the remnants of those, in front of those duplexes. Those are filled. You would think school was still on. So that's, if it was a normal size street, that would be intolerable. So if he can go with the double two-car garages. And then, of course, that uh, so-called community middle in the center of these um, proposed uh, arrangement here. I think that's just going to be a swamp, personally. Um, who's, nobody's going to take care of it, even if the city does mow it. And again, just like he uh, brought out, who wants to have a playground in your backyard unless it's your kids playing in your backyard? And I've lived next door to a soccer field and all kinds of wonderful things. It's not pleasant for the people who live there all the time. That our neighborhood does have Ray Park, and it's a pretty good sized park. We have quite a few things to kids, for the little kids to play on. It also has a baseball field, and they set it up for soccer practice and football practice during those seasons. So I don't particularly care about having a uh, so-called neighborhood park there. I'd like to end then, and this is obviously off the wall and I am not an engineer, but common sense wonders if you could make rear entry garages there instead of having all this empty space. That way you would keep cars off the streets and it would make better use of that center property that's just kind of out and it's just going to be wasted. Water will go across it, some of it will go across it, some of it will settle in the middle, and we will have mosquito heaven. So, um, let's see, where else did I want to go? Okay, and you said the sole purpose is to go from four houses per acre to six houses per acre. Why? Our neighborhood doesn't need to have six houses per acre. The houses around there are all on, you know, half acres at least. I think they're pretty good sized lots, especially the older homes. Some of them are, are bigger than that. And it would just, um, I don't, I, if that's the sole purpose, I don't know how necessary that is. And as far as the sidewalk goes, it would be grand for the kids to roller skate here around Lane if their parents feel comfortable with that. But really, a sidewalk would be a waste of money. There's not a sidewalk close. It would just go out into Lane or out into Davis Street. Well, this will be an opportunity to have some sidewalks then. <laughs> there has to be a starting place somewhere. All right, we'll take it. So. Okay, I think I've about worn you guys out on that one. Okay, that's all. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Questions, sir? Is there anyone else here wishing to speak on behalf of this agenda item? There being none, the public hearing is closed. Discussion from council. A motion? Mayor, I move to approve the ordinance changing the zoning of the subject property from the SF 7.5 single family residential to the SF 5 single family residential. Second. There is a motion by Mayor Pro Tem Hander and a second by Council Member Spiegel. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. The motion carries. Aye. Item 5A, receive a report, hold a discussion, and take action on appointing a mayor pro tem to serve a one-year term. Mayor, I make a motion to nominate Robert Crawley to serve as mayor pro tem for a one-year term. Second. There is a motion by Mayor Pro Tem Hander and a second by Council Member Spiegel. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. The motion carries. When, when you weren't here, uh, I, we were just going to do it. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir. Go ahead. Anyway, on the previous vote, I need to abstain, please. Oh, let the record show that on the previous vote, um, then Council Member Crawley abstained. Now he's the mayor pro tem. Okay. All right. Item 5B, receive a report, hold a discussion, and take action on a resolution to recognize local 
069 of the International Association of Firefighters as the representative <coughs> agent for all dentists and firefighters, excluding exempt employees and authorizing the city to meet and confer with local 069 of the International Association of Firefighters, Ms. Lay. Hello, Mayor and Council. I get to wear my civil service hat director, director hat tonight. And so I want to uh, present the council with an opportunity that's before us to work collaboratively with our local fire association to initiate the meet and confer process for non-exempt fire personnel. Meet and confer holds the potential to provide both parties creative ways to best administer processes and practices that will meet the needs of our department. This includes adjusting civil service rules that can often be limiting. The first step towards engaging the meet and confer process would be to recognize our local association as a representative agent for the employees. As outlined in Texas Local Government Code 142.109, we are in receipt of a unanimous petition from the Denison Firefighters Association requesting such designation. Next steps, if the council were to engage this process, would be for the city to appoint individuals from finance, employee services, and Denison Fire Rescue Divisions to serve as the city's representatives. The city representatives and then the association representatives would coordinate a series of public meetings for the purpose to discuss and finalize a meet and confer agreement, which would be presented to the council for adoption. Should the council wish to engage the meet and confer process, you have before you a resolution recognizing local 069 of the International Association of Firefighters as the representative agent for the Denison firefighters, excluding the exempt employees. And it also authorizes the city to meet and confer with the association. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Questions for Ms. Lay. Thank you. Yes, Discussion from council. Do I have a motion? I move to approve the resolution to recognize local 069 of the International Association of Firefighters as the representative agent for all dentists and firefighters, excluding exempt employees, and authorize the city to meet and confer with local 069 of the International Association of Firefighters. Second. There is a motion by Councilmember Courtright, and there is a motion by Councilmember Courtright and a second by Councilmember Hander. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion carries. Item 6A, receiver report. Oh, wait a minute. I'm just skipping right over Ronnie. Item 5C, receiver report, hold a discussion and take action on entering into a contract with Sunbelt Industrial Services in the amount of $100,421.25 for wastewater spill site treatment and remediation and authorize the interim city manager to execute the same. Mr. Bates. Good evening, Councilman Mayor and Mayor. Um, yes, we've had a, a sewage spill uh, from one of our pipelines that broke and we're, we're needing to classify this as an emergency uh, contract so that we can go ahead and get the, um, the spillage cleaned up and get everything, the pipe has been repaired and just get everything put back together. Any questions? Questions for Mr. Bates? Discussion from council. I'll entertain a motion. Mayor, I move to approve entering into a contract with Sunbelt Industrial Services in the amount of $100,421.25 for wastewater spill site treatment and remediation and authorize interim city manager to execute the same. Second. There is a motion by Mayor Pro Tem Crawley and a second by Council Member Thorne. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. The motion carries. Item 6A, receive a report and hold a discussion regarding proposed amendments to Denison, Texas Code of Ordinances, Chapter 18, Article 2, Cemeteries. Mr. Eastwood. Good evening, Mayor and Council. The purpose of this project update is to communicate proposed amendments to the cemetery ordinance. Staff believes these proposals will assist in providing services that will enhance our community. The reference divisions, division one, two, and three are the um, proposals we're looking to have changed. Mm -hmm. 
Division I, definitions, um, correct names of cemeteries, add remaining city-owned and operated cemeteries, continual care of lots and graves, change the language to reflect that Fairview is no longer a perpetual care cemetery. So we just like to use the right terminology and descriptors to describe the, the cemetery um, topics. Cemetery board, change cemetery board language to model the Parks and Recreation Commission. We would like to establish an advisory board and uh, utilize that board to help us move forward with enhancing our cemetery. Um, to do so, we'd like to have it reflective of um, a system that already works within our parks and recreation system. There was one more on there that you didn't, that you didn't cover. Oh, yes. thank you. Dallas Corporation. Yeah. So change the burial times from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. instead of 9 to 4. We're already working with the funeral homes uh, in this regard, and it, it's working quite well. So we'd like the ordinances to reflect what's already happening. Uh, permissions for buying and selling. Add or, or his um, designee to the authority of superintendent with regard to lots being bought or sold. Uh, there's, there's office staff that's better suited um, to buy and sell our lots. Uh, interments, change the notice time to make uh, burial arrangements from 24 hours to 48 hours. This essentially will just help us be better prepared for these uh, procedures. Um, it has been. Um, we're limited with staff, so if you imagine um, we, we have multiple funeral homes and we need to do multiple funerals at the same time, we're really limited with staff. Um, it would take them away from all other cemetery responsibilities, for example, if we had two or more funerals at the same time. That's a good question. Sorry. My, my slides are different than what's up there. The monument tombstone concrete foundation work uh, changed the foundation minimum thickness from 24 inches to 4 inches, add that a granite or concrete foundation can be used, and clarify that there will be some variances to these specifications that will need to have a special permit add a specification for cremation burial monuments so they are consistent across all cemeteries. Uh, we really just want to make this industry standard uh, with the size that's um, um, shown right now. Um, it actually uh, does not allow us to maintain um, those areas very well. There's also a higher cost, um, uh, time and expense to having the, the larger um, uh, headstones. There's a lot of re reasons to it, but essentially it's to update our specifications with regard to current industry standards. It also ensures that uh, warranties are honored um, as a result through the monument companies. Does that, does that hold true in the, in the veteran section? Um, um, that, that's a good question. I think that may be tied in with the special permit section, and um, we'll vet, vet this. We have some time. So I'll, I'll make note of that as well. Really what we've identified is in certain areas of the cemetery, we've had those fairly large um, headstones that have, um, once, once they get set, they can't get reset um, and remaintained. So I don't really see it as a problem within the veteran section right now. Just before you go, um, changing the foundation minimum, some of those very large tombstones foundation is only four inches thick, wouldn't that have a really good chance of shifting to the point of perhaps falling even? Um, I don't think so. We've actually, um, we've vetted with uh, quote unquote experts in the industry and they, they believe otherwise, but I do think we have time uh, to figure that out if, if that may be a concern for sure.
placements of objects, landscaping, and maintenance. Uh, we want to add that the superintendent or designee has the authority to remove all unauthorized objects or vegetation at their discretion. Um, in cemeteries, you could get a lot of different things being placed. Uh, for example, trees or fixed objects that are around the cemetery or uh, the, uh, the sites. Um, and you can't maintain when there's fixed objects around. So we'd like to have better language that would allow for those things to take place, but still give us flexibility if we need to um, move different items. notify people who have loved ones yeah. buried there because one of the reasons people choose Fairview over some of the other cemeteries in the region is because um, they are so rigid um, in up to and including if they don't happen to like the flowers that are in the vase that day yeah. they remove them so um, I would suggest that you do a lot of due diligence on that particular one before you before you start removing things. Yeah, no, that's wonderful. On the back end, um, we've had discussion as staff, and we completely agree with that. Um, and in our regard, we want to maintain the integrity of the memorial. Um, on the same side, we also, just for example, the tree example, if there's a tree, um, that was placed next to a monument and it doesn't get identified sometime later that the root system will push out and push on um, not just current but future sites which is problematic for everyone. So that would just be an example. Um, but I see, I, I completely and, see. And I, don't, and, I, and I think that it's probably a very good idea to prohibit a plant permanent yeah. in the cemetery unless it was strategically planned by the cemetery sure. um, and, and not at, at personal grave sites. But, um, but there, are, there are other things that are mm -hmm. at the, the grave sites that uh, you, you start removing those without having very, very good conversations. Um, you know, this just happens to be a very personal subject for me. So, yeah. Uh, We agree, definitely. Sorry, let me go back one more. Um, the, the last point is the, the variance. So remove Exhibit A, cemetery price, and fee schedule in its entirety. We're going yearly to um, update user fees. So we'd like that to be reflective in our, our cemetery as well. Say that one more. Uh, we go um, annually to, to update our user fees across uh, the board within the city. So we want our ordinance to have the same language. Okay. So this is a project update, um, so no action required, but I'm available for any questions. It will be coming before the, um, the council at a later date after you have yeah. looked at all the questions we asked. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Yeah, it's good. Thank you for the questions, by the way. Yeah. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Well, there being no further business to come before this body, there is no need for an executive session. The time is 6.49, and we stand adjourned.